3,415 pounds. This is the Wildwood 179 DBK here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And these little FSX single axles, I think, are one of the most easily underestimated but most standout products within their category. They do a lot of little things a little bit differently, and it is just painfully obvious from start to finish that there was a lot of good thought and attention that went into this. If you like the idea of like a, uh, a larger bunkhouse, you got plenty of sleeping space, you got the big campsite window, and this has a Murphy bed, but you don't have a vehicle or you don't want to tow something that can uh, handle like a bigger trailer in that 4,500 pound range, this is a really sneaky, really effective alternative to those bigger body models. And there's just so many little things that all work together to really make these work, make me really like them. Um, it, we're gonna start kind of from the bottom up and point out the fact that we are carpetless and ventless in these floors. These are easy cleaning, especially in a bunkhouse like this. Maybe you got a dog or two, something like that. Kid friendly, pet friendly. You can just sweep everything right out the door if you need to. It is just simple and easy in that regard. Now your color palette in here, it's very sharp. It's super neutral, of course, but it, it also is on the modern edge of neutral, if that makes any sense, but it's very comfortable in here. That, in conjunction with the, the, the color palette and the full-size interior height, it's a normal six-and-a-half-foot-tall ceiling. It's not a uh, reduced-height single-axle camper. Again, that's part of the reason this does weigh about 10% more than a, a normal entry-level seven-foot-wide thing in this category. It's a little wider. It's a little taller. It's a little bit closer to full size, but just small enough to be more comfortably towable without giving up any significant floor plan features. Um, plus things like that kitchen venting skylight up top there. All the extra light from the skylight, the huge window over on the campsite we're going to look at, it makes this little camper not look and feel so small, but one of the really cool things here is obviously this Murphy bed that we're staring at. It is a very different application of a Murphy bed from anything I've seen almost ever before. Uh, I've only ever one time seen a Murphy bed system that kind of works like this one, and it was a really smart way to maximize living space because what this Murphy bed setup gives us is all the normal sleeping of a single axle mini camper, but it gives us the extra seating space that you're going to want on a rainy day stuck inside with the family without the extra weight and cost of a slide out. It's genius. But what's kind of cool, if you don't care about it being a Murphy bed, it doesn't have to be a Murphy bed. There's absolutely nothing that says you can't just leave it down. It won't hurt anything. There's no harm in doing so. So it's, it, it's only whatever you want it to be is kind of cool. You can leave it down most of the time if you don't want to monkey with it. Or uh, if it's going to be a rainy day, you can just sort of, you know, put the bed away and you can expand your living space as required. There's just no real downside to this setup. But uh, what is kind of nice here is you can see that you do have some really aggressive, like blackout pleated shades over your sleeping area, your dining area. If you really, really, really want to keep some nosy neighbors or Mr. Sunshine out of here, you can. Again, you're going to find plenty of outlets all around this camper, household, USB, anything and everything you want. And then down here, that little bit extra wide body, that seven and a half foot body, gives them the ability to have a little stand. So if you do have CPAP users, uh, you could easily make this the headboard because there's nothing that says this side or that side is the headboard. This bed is whatever you want it to be. There's no wrong answer to it. So whether it's you know phone charging, alarm clocks, you want to put a light, a fan over here, whatever you need, you can do whatever you want with this layout. Now again, this does give you actual dedicated hanging clothing space, and I know I sound like a broken record, but you have to understand how rare and how great of a find that is in a small single axle trailer. Now your front pass-through storage you can access from inside or outside. They do allow you to flip, uh, flip this up, and where that's actually kind of handy is like if you have some kind of cargo under the sofa, but it shifts in transit, well, you can just get inside, you can lift the sofa up, you can scoot it to the left or right side of the passer and get to it far, far more easily. You don't have to like send one of the kids crawling through it to get to your, your like tote with your hoses or something, you know? And you might have noticed how I've got these little uh, armrest or back headrest sort of bolsters jumping around. They're free floating. They just sort of slot in place. You can flip them around, move them around however you want. 
So, like, if you want to lay on the sofa, read a book or something like that, you can. You want to lean your head back. If you add a TV to the camper, you can do something like that. There's no, again, there's no wrong answer. And that's what I love about this model is the flexibility that it has. And on that note, the way that they've handled their entertainment here is so, so cool. This camper does not have a built-in stereo system like almost every RV does. Instead, it has this uh, marine Bluetooth indoor-outdoor speaker. So you can take this wherever you want, when you want. Maybe you don't even want to use it at the campsite. You could strap it to the frame of your bike and have music on the road. You could uh, take it onto the pontoon. You know, there's, again, <laughs> no wrong answer. And isn't that smart? They put USB plugs right next to it uh, so you can keep that thing charged up whenever. And I love the fact that they actually do have a real uh, sort of command center. It's simple because it's a simple camper, but it's way up high where the little kids are going to have a hard time getting to it. But, how's about this thing? How's about this campsite panoramic mega window that we have going on here? I feel like I need to say like a monster truck rally, like that mega window. But if you want to get a good look at your site and the neighbors and your cousins and everybody else's campsite, I struggle to think of a small trailer that has a better, bigger window arrangement than this FSX Wildwood at Haywood RV right here. So we talked about how it's carpetless and around your dining area, I think that's a really clutch feature because it helps, you know, kid, I, well, not just kids. I, I would, I'd like to say kids make messes, but frankly, as much as I'm ashamed to admit this, I, as big of a mouth as I have, I have a hard time getting food into it sometimes. And sometimes it finds its way down the front of my shirt down onto the floor, and having no carpet around that dinette, not a bad thing if you're camping with a guy like me. We could, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I'm a slob, but I'm not, not saying it. <laughs> I like to take a second sometimes to lift up the dinette bases and show you that there is full storage under there. A lot of campers have that, but there are some that don't. There are some brands that might put like, uh, the converter panel or something like that down here. And you can see in this case, it's got plenty of storage and plenty of cross members so that even adults can sit on this thing and not wear it out. Another benefit of the little bit wider body here is you can more easily fit your whole, like say four person family, for instance, around this table. Or if you're like me, I'm bigger. My wife and kid are smaller. I can be on one side, they can be on the other and we can all be comfortable. Another good look at those privacy shades here because you really can blot out the sun with this thing. I like that they went with black on there because um, it doesn't make the RV look or feel oppressive since they have this really good lighting package going on throughout here. So we've got double, double bunks as compared to the common single bunks that you usually get in a single axle camper. Now this is not the first time this has ever been done, but it is by far the exception to the rule in single axle campers. And it just isn't possible to give you this size bunks and a decent bathroom in something uh, a little more narrow than this. It's a really, really big kind of calling card feature. Now the window curtains on these uh, windows are a little bit in the way, but you can see that there is a center beam. Both of these windows do open for airflow, so you can always get some decent breezes through here. Now over in the kitchen, there's a couple easy to miss good standout features here. Like we've got a full uh, two door, six cubic foot fridge freezer. We've got that extra venting skylight up top to help keep some air, or some heat out of there and keep some air rolling through say that kitchen breeze window. You've got a huge farm sink in this thing and it eats up a lot of counter space. But guys, you can always put a cover over the top of that sink and regain counter space. You know what you can't do? You can't just make a sink bigger. You're stuck with the sink that a camper has unless you're really good at remanufacturing something at your additional expense. Now, you don't have to worry about that. You have a big high-rise sink. You could use it for bigger pots and pans. Or, let's say you've got a little baby baby. You could very easily give a little kiddo a bath in here. There's nothing that says you can't. Plus, more outlets in more places. And in this layout, Little campers like this, the entertainment's definitely a secondary concern, but you can see some TV hookups to the right of that cabinet. It'd be very easy to mount a swing arm TV up there, and it could swing to face the front bed, the sofa, the dinette, maybe even the bunks, depending on how large of a, uh, a swing arm system you apply here. Plus, they did a good job of really effectively using the space below the sink. It starts with a big full extension drawer, 
And as innocuous as that sounds, that's a big deal in little campers. A lot of single axle campers have no drawers whatsoever in them. Now you might notice, you have full access to this top shelf for some things like some dish soap or like a sh baking sheet or something like that, but you don't have access down here. That's because that's where your water heater and pump are located. But what's kind of nice is that means they're very easily accessed for things like winterizing. So you don't have to, uh, you know, go digging and crawling around in the camper when it does come winterization season. It's all right there. Or you just let our team here at Halo RV take care of it and then you don't worry about it. What is also nice, you do have a huge spot down here. You want to throw some totes, some big, uh, you know, duffel bags for the kiddos or whatnot. You got a big chunk of just whatever space down in there. Now, the bathroom is simple, but effective. They did what they needed to here. They didn't overdo anything. It's effective. It gets the job done. I like, by the way, that it has a simple shower pan instead of that common step-up travel trailer tub. It's not the, it's not like the most earth-shatteringly new concept out there, but it's definitely, I think, my preference and the preference of a lot of people. There are some people who say, oh, I, I really need a tub to give my little kiddo a bath. Well, RVs don't hold a lot of water as it is little campers like this because they can't. The body's not big enough to have huge uh, holding tanks, guys. So you're probably going to give the kiddo uh, a shower wand, little sort of mini bath anyway. And the lip on that little shower, it's enough. You just don't need a big step in travel trailer tub. Once again, it's easy to miss, but it's really one of the greatest sort of secret weapons that the FSX series has in its arsenal here at Halo RV is that in a class that is pretty much always seven foot wide a uh you know wood skeleton aluminum skin single axle camper they're almost always seven foot wide these guys came out swinging seven and a half wide and it doesn't sound like a major difference but when you walk through the trailers you see the difference it makes it's that little bit bigger body remember it's the reason they're able to pull off that bunk and bathroom combination that works so so well in this floor plan it opens up that living space it does all of it. Now, it does mean that the camper weighs a little bit more, but you're getting a lot more for it. Part of the reason it weighs a little bit more is the bigger body size kind of compelled them to put like a heavier chassis system on this. So it does have a little thicker running gear on it. Um, we've got an integrated A-frame up front that kind of helps keep everything a little bit lower to the ground overall. So it doesn't have uh, necessarily the shortest exterior height of anything in this class, but it is shorter than a lot of those tandem axles. It's really a neat niche in between her and i love the fact that they still maintain four corner stabilizer jacks as opposed to trying to get away with just the two on the rear and then the tongue jack some brands not as often today as previously in the marketplace but some brands will still try to say oh you don't need those front jacks it's short enough it doesn't wiggle my eye it doesn't wiggle those things wiggle like crazy so so you can see that the body's a little bit bigger but something you can't see at least initially without knowing what to look for is something that they put on these called Tough Coat. They do this across the board at Wildwood RV, and it's one of the things I like about them here at Halet. So first of all, a normal aluminum skin on a travel trailer is a .04 inch thickness, and that probably doesn't mean much to you, but that's normal. This is a .03. It's like 33% thicker, basically. That's a, uh, or 25% thicker, I'm sorry, I did the math wrong in my head. But they use a thicker uh, metallic skin. So it's going to be a little bit more weight, but it's also going to be far more resistant to stuff like uh, if it's a storm and a stick hits the side of this, or if you're going through a campground and there's a tree that rakes its branches against the side of the trailer, it also has an anti-scratch coating applied to this. So that tough coat system that they apply to these it makes a big difference. It doesn't just help the RV look good today. It helps it keep looking good long term. And that's the difference here. This isn't made for just today. Even though you could definitely call this an entry level camper, for sure. But entry level just means starter class. It doesn't have to mean cheap, you know. It's smartly constructed. And that's such a key difference. Like, for instance, you can still walk all over the roof of this thing if you need to. Not all single axle travel trailers can say as much. One of the other benefits of the little bit heavier chassis and running gear is it does mean that the whole body sits up a little bit higher. And that does mean that we have a little more clearance for our sewer outlets, which is a, something that smaller campers can sometimes struggle with. We're still backup camera ready. That's a feature that a lot of, but not all, little campers like this will tend to have. The spare tire on the back there is kind of like cough syrup. I hope you have it, but I hope <laughs> you never need it. 
And a maximum size awning over here on the campsite of the camper really starts this thing off the right way. Notice too, look at the location of those bunk windows. A lot of brands will put the bunk windows over here on the, our, like the, the fire pit side of the camper. But if you flip open that little sort of convenience camp kitchen center, whatever you want to call it, it would block the lower window. So they did the smart thing and they built the windows on the back. The other thing that does is it makes the windows not fight for space with that awning arm. It's what allows them to have a big awning because think about it. If they didn't put that awning arm on that rear wall with that little camp kitchenette, there'd be like there'd be nowhere for an awning. It'd be like a joke of a six foot awning. So it's a really big deal how they put this together. That's what I was saying when I said this is one of the most detail oriented, like really well thought out little campers out there. So little different thing over here, our kind of sink arrangement. I've got this set up in a way you can use it sort of ish like a camp shower. Now obviously you can't, well I guess you could actually just flip this little lever back and have the thing just spraying over here. You could use it like a little bit of an outside shower. I hadn't really thought about that when I threw it up here. I just wanted to make sure that you got a chance to see it. But this simple little uh, quick release hose, it's good for campsite cleanup, washing your hands real quick or as we kind of just discovered, be very handy way to kind of hose the kids off before they go inside. Now this is cool. This is what occupies uh, a chunk of the space under that lower bunk. And I don't know that it's a true, it's most like a convenience center. And I think that's what I'm gonna call it here. I don't know that I'm gonna call it a full on camp kitchen. Although you do have a grill quick connect right here. You have a little place to be able to wash your hands, do some prep work. That is kind of like countertop space. And it's a little more like countertop space when I don't have this drawer sticking out in your face. But how about this nice big drawer that's out here right when we need it, gone when we don't. And this, in conjunction with the fridge inside, gives us like eight cubic foot of cold storage. And this is another good way to keep from tracking dirt and foot traffic in and out of the RV. And then look at the little plugs. There's a ton of plugs over here. So if you need tons of different phone chargers, you want to set up a little portable picnic table, do a little um, cookout station or something, you can. You can see how we've got the uh, full length LED lighting going on under that awning. We've already talked about inside, but I want to reiterate and refocus on that big campside window over here under that patio awning next to that easy come and go door that has both a larger handle as well as those double steps. So, I mean, this is, this is just awesome. Plus, plus, under that Murphy bed, we still have a big pass through. I mean, check that out. Uh, <laughs> This is, this is fantastic. You don't always get good pass-through storage when a Murphy bed is in play, but they certainly did the job here. And that nice big wide door is perfect for using that portable prep plug that you see right there. If you do want to get uh, a solar panel to kind of keep your batteries topped off when you are off the grid, You've got the perfect place to keep them stored and it's easy to get it plugged in. And the portable panels are nice because you can kind of chase the sun a little bit, you know? Anyway, guys, there's a lot of good things to be had here. Every trailer is kind of the best in different ways. So it's just a matter of what's the best for you. And that's why we keep all these here. I think this one's a standout offering though. So whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything between, you're, you're fine, sir, no big deal. Take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping everyone. Remember, we don't do hidden fees, but we do everything else.